Hi, Brightbone here, and I'm back with another video. And today we're going to take a look at Cobalt Strike and the Cobalt Strike beacons that come through PowerShell. I'm consistently seeing this as an attack technique that adversaries are doing, threat groups are doing. They will use PowerShell to load a Cobalt Strike beacon. But what we can do with the PowerShell that we can receive is our, with our logs is reverse engineer the location of the C2 server, whether that be a named pipe, if it's an SMB listener, or whether it be an HTTPS server or a DNS server. But let's go ahead. We will put a PowerShell beacon on one of our hosts, and then we'll reverse engineer it with CyberChef. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So we're going to go over here to Attacks, Packages, and Payload Generator. And then we're going to choose our output. Our output is going to be PowerShell command. And we'll choose our HTTPS listener here. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And we'll use 64-bit payload. We're going to go ahead and generate this. And then we'll save payload.txt here. So we've saved it in home, RDP, payload.txt. Now if I come over here to my command line, and I cat for payload.txt, we should be able to see the output of this. And we can see it's PowerShell, no operation, hidden window with an encoded command, and this is all base64. A lot of base64 code here. This is what we're eventually going to reverse engineer. Uh, but let's go ahead and get our beacon into our host. So to get our beacon into our host, normally what we would do is very simple. We'll just start a Python HTTP server over here on port 8000. And then we'd set up some kind of link or some method to get this running on the host. It's not really hard to get a command running once you have a foothold. So we'll jump over to our Hunter workstation here. We'll pop open Edge, refresh this, and we should have our beacon. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this out. And we're just simply going to run it from the command line. And here we go. And that's it. So it goes into the background, and then we come back over here to Cobalt Strike, and we have a beacon. If we take a look here, we now have a beacon, and notice it is running from process PowerShell.exe. Now, once a beacon's running, they can move around to different processes on the system. They can uh, change the type of beacon. They can switch up all sorts of different details to where this beacon is then connected to another beacon that then connects out to the internet. But what we want to do is we want to at least start the process of helping you detect this when it comes through PowerShell. So let's jump back over to Hunter here and let's open the event viewer. And in event viewer, if we come up here to our original screen and you go to Windows PowerShell, Make sure we refresh this. In the 400 and 600 series events, you're going to get the original encoded command, right? The whole thing. Now, this isn't very valuable from a rule creation perspective. When you're creating a rule from this, you want to use a different log. But this is useful for reverse engineering. If this is all you have, great. We can reverse engineer from here, and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. But the 400 and 600 series events in PowerShell, so you can see 400 and 600, will both show the entirety of the base64 that was run. This is a huge log. It should stand out pretty well when you're looking for it through the sim. Now, if we go over to Microsoft Windows PowerShell Operational, let's find it here, PowerShell. And then we go into the operational logs. If you have script block logging turned on, which I highly recommend you do, then you will get a 4104 event. And typically it's going to be this one here with a warning. This is our Cobalt Strike beacon. There's a second set of bake 64, but the way that we know this is a Cobalt Strike beacon is this BXOR of 35. It's XOR 35 decimal. So it's going to help us in our reverse engineering. But this is the one you can make the rule from. You can look for this BXOR 35. You can look for uh, this byte var code equals system convert from base64 string. The, these are pretty common only to Cobalt Strike beacons when they're installed via PowerShell. Now, this is not the stageless beacon. 
This is the stager, so it's smaller. The stageless beacon, you would have like 20 or 30 of these long base 64 uh, logs, and you would actually have to piece them all back together, unbase 64 them, remove the executable, and then you can run that through your detection scripts and you can determine the location. We can do that in the next video. We can make this a series. So we know we have our beacon here. We have our Vizor of 35. So if we come over here to our Elastic Sim, I already created a rule to look for this. So come over here to security, we'll go to alerts. And we can see Cobalt Byte. Cobalt Strike Beacon and PowerShell's hit a couple times. So if I go into our investigating timeline here, it's going to pull up the event. We'll expand our event here and then view all fields in the table. And then if we come down here, it's way into this table. Here is our script. And there's our var code. And if you come down here, you can see the Bzor of 35 right there. And that's what we're using for the detection here. So I close this out and I go back into the main rule. You can see that I am using a Bzor of 35 in the rule. So we'll go ahead and Cobalt Strike Beacon here in PowerShell. I gave this a critical. It is literally looking for event code 4104 and a message of anything containing Bzor space 35. And that's catching my Cobalt Strike Beacon. So now that we know how to build this rule, let's go ahead and do the reversal. So we'll start, though, with the harder reversal. Let's do the reversal from the main portion, the 400, 600 series logs. So we'll go back out to our Discover. And this is the great thing about having SIM, is this can come in from any location. You can reverse engineer it, and you can know the locations. And we'll go to, we're into WinLog Beat, and we're going to go event.code 400. And in our event code 400, we can go into our event code here, and we just want to grab all of this base 64 right here. So let's go from beginning all the way to the bottom. That's a long bunch of base 64. If I can't grab it out of here easily, I'll just get it out of the beacon file, but I think I got it all there. Copy. And so we want to take this into CyberChef. CyberChef, one of my favorite reversal tools. This is going to allow us to take this base 64 and reverse it all the way down to its source of the HTTPS beacon. So we'll take our base 64 and we'll put it in here. And then the very first thing we want to do is a from hex statement. So we'll go from hex, or from base 64, excuse me, not hex. And then we can see some text here, right? Looks like some text, but it's got a lot of null bytes in it. That's what these dots are. So then we can go remove null bytes. And now we've got some text that makes sense, right? But it's another bunch of base 64. So I only want the base 64 so I can continue my recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to regex for this. So I'm going to do a regex. We'll do regular expression. And then we're going to do a regex. This is the one I always use. It's A to Z then A to Z, then 0 to 9, plus slash close. And that gives us everything. But then we're going to do a 40 and like that. And that, for some reason, did not work. Sometimes we have to play around with this to get it to work. 30, 40, 50. Did I do this? Oh, I didn't do 0 to 9. Oops. There we go. So now we have our base 64. It's all selected. And it didn't even get the last equal sign. That's fine. So then we want to take our output format and we want to change this to just list the capture groups, right? Or list the matches, excuse me. 
And that gives us our second thing of base64. So now we want to do another from base64 here. Another from base64. So we'll go from base64. Drag this into our recipe. And now we've got some weird looking code here. Why can't we undo this? Well, if we come back up here and we take a look, you can see at the very end of the code here, we have gzip stream, which means we need to g unzip this. We can't just unbase 64, we have to g unzip it as well. So we will put these steps back and then we'll take a g unzip just like this. And now we've got this code that looks like the second log. So we can see our Bzor of 35 here. So if you match on the second 4104 event, you're going to get this code. This is much easier to reverse engineer than what we had to go through there. We went through one, two, three, four, five steps just to get us to this log. Now we have to do it again. So we need to get this base 64 and unzor it. And that's going to give us our final destination. So let's do that. We're going to go another regex. So we'll do our regular expression. And then we're going to copy this because this finds our longer base 64 string. And you can see, well, it didn't find everything there. Let's go longer, maybe 50 worked. So now we have our base 64 string and we want to only list matches. And then we want to go from base 64 again. So from base 64 one more time. And then we still need one more step here, and that is the Zor. So we have to Zor it. We're going to do a decimal Zor of 35. So our very last step will be a decimal Zor of 35. And our recipe is getting kind of long here, so I may have to uh, kind of shove it in there in the bottom. And then we'll drag it down one more. There we go. And then we want to do a decimal key of 35. Now, once we do that, if you've got a keen eye, you might see here that we have a, what looks like a string. And then we have down here an IP address. That is actually the IP address of our beacon host. So that is where Cobalt Strike is coming from. Now, if you want to, you know, extract this in an easier way and you see it's an IP address, you can just do, it. let's see, it's IP, uh, extract IP addresses. You can throw that in the bottom of your uh, recipe. You may want to do that. You may not. This won't always be an IP address, depending on the beacon type. This could be a named pipe. If it's a named pipe, it's probably connecting to an SMB beacon. And that SMB beacon is typically running on process run DLL 32 on the system. So it's then you would need to sniff traffic on that host and determine uh, what that name pipe is communicating with over SMB. And then you'll find your upstream victim. Usually that upstream victim is actually another host that has Cobalt Strike installed on it. So it makes this tree of I can only have, I have one C2 channel going back and forth, and then I have a bunch of hosts inside the network communicating to that C2 channel. So you can chain things together. I highly recommend you save these recipes as well. So when you're done, if you save this recipe, notice you can just save it right here and you can pull it back up for later. So you can give it a recipe name, we'll call it Cobalt Strike Beacon Reversal. Just that simple, and then you save it, and it's there for the future. CyberChef's a great tool. You can reverse engineer Cobalt Strike beacons. You can reverse engineer Empire, uh, Covenant Grunts I've done with this. It's really great, and it's a really helpful tool for hunters trying to find Cobalt Strike. 
but you got to start with those PowerShell logs. You got to look for that a 400, 600, or 4104 event. And that's all I got. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much.